So here we are on graph paper. If I want to find the uh, circumcenter of this triangle, again, I need to create at least two perpendicular bisectors. So here we go. Let's start with this horizontal side because that'll be the easiest. Um, if it's going to be the bisector, it's going to have to hit the middle of this side. So this um, side is 10 long. So the middle will be exactly five over. So there's three, four, five. So, um, so I don't have to guess. That's the benefit of doing the graph paper. I can count these squares and be exactly at the middle. So all I need to do is go perpendicular. And the graph even shows me where the perpendicular is going to be. So we can just be a lot more precise when we do our perpendicular bisector. So this would be a perpendicular okay so that line is a perpendicular bisector alright so there's one perpendicular bisector um, yeah I'll go ahead and just put a little box here to remind us that that is perpendicular okay so all we need really is one more perpendicular bisector and that will show us um, wherever they meet that's going to be the circumcenter. So it really doesn't matter which one of these sides I'm going to use. Um, I think I'll wind up doing both sides just to, um, you know, just for practice to show you guys how it's done. Okay, so look at this. If I want to do the midpoint of this side over here, it's not hard to see where the midpoint's going to be. You know, even though I can't really just count the squares exactly, I can tell the midpoint's going to be right here. Uh, and I'm kind of looking at slope when I do this. Um, see how, looking at this point, see how it's down to um, over 4? And then to get to the other end, I would go down to over 4. So because of, it's that same pattern, down to over 4, down to over 4 the rest of the way, that guarantees me that this will be the midpoint. Okay, so now all I need to do is perpendicular. Now, as I was doing that, the, the slope, so, okay, this is important. The, the slope of this side of the line, okay, um, I said down 2 over 4, okay, so that's negative 2 over 4. Um, but what does that reduce to? one half. So in fact, let me just replace that. So down 2 over 4 is the same thing as negative one half. And if you think about it, I could have looked at it this way. Down 1 over 2. Down 1 over 2. 1 over 2. 1 over 2. So you see the slope of this line, the rise and the run, is down 1 over 2. So negative one half. Um, now, like we practiced earlier, what will be the slope of a perpendicular line? Because this is going to be important. Say it out loud. I'm hoping you were at least thinking that the slope of a perpendicular line is going to be positive 2. Um, the reciprocal, remember, it has to be opposite and reciprocal. Okay? If this one's negative, the other one's got to be positive. If this is 1 over 2, this one's got to be 2 over 1, which is 2. So, as I draw my perpendicular bisector, uh, I've already put the midpoint, so I know it's going to be the bisector. But to make sure that it's perpendicular, I need to make sure that the slope is 2. Um, and I will go ahead and say 2 over 1 to remind us that rise over run, this line I'm about to draw on needs to have a slope of up 2 over 1. So if I were you, I would start drawing the line from this midpoint. So using the slope up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1 would be like this, up 2 over 1. I could continue the pattern in the other direction by going down to back one, down to back one. OK, 
Okay, down to back one, down to back one. So you can see already where those lines intersected. They meet right here um, at the point three comma zero. I'm gonna go ahead and draw the line. Okay, so this purple line is another perpendicular bisector. All right, it's perpendicular right here, and it's a bisector, it's the midpoint. So uh, we've answered the question already. We found um, if, if I was looking for the circumcenter, I found it. So the circumcenter is all right, so the coordinates of the circumcenter would be, in this case, 3 comma 0. Okay, it's right there. Okay, now just to be thorough and for extra practice, um, let's go ahead and, and see where what the other perpendicular bisector would look like. It's just good practice. Okay, um, I will go ahead and use green this time. Okay, so looking at the final side that I haven't used yet, I'm hoping you can see that the midpoint of this side would be right here. Now let's go back and talk about the slope and everything again. Maybe I'll leave that opposite and reciprocal. Okay. So one more time, the slope. Okay, looking at this line over here, the slope is up to over one. Okay, up to over one. So the slope is, is two. All right, and I could think of it as two over one. So, what will be the slope of a perpendicular line? A perpendicular line will have slope negative one half, opposite in sign and reciprocal, two over one, one over two. So again, because I've placed the midpoint, I know I'm gonna have a bisector when I draw this line. To make sure that it's perpendicular, I have to make sure I do a slope of negative one half. That's down one, right two. Down one, right two. In fact, um, when you do a negative slope, you can think of it this way. Put the negative sign in always in the numerator. So that's down one, right two. So from here, I will go down one, right two. 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 I could continue the process to the left by going up one, back two. Up one, back two. So you see these green dots are showing me where my new perpendicular bisector will be, my third perpendicular bisector. Once again, of course, it's still hitting the uh, same point. The circumcenter is three comma zero. I just wanted to show you one more time how to draw a perpendicular bisector. I'm going to go ahead and draw it in. OK, so that is my final perpendicular bisector. It's perpendicular right here, and it's the midpoint of this side. So it's a perpendicular bisector. And that's how you do it. Um, that's how you find the perpendicular bisector. Um, and, that's, uh, and you use those to find your circumcenter. I'm going to do one more example. Um, but um, it's just going to be a repetition of the same thing. So if you feel like you understand, you can stop watching now. Okay, let's do one more example using this triangle right here. All right, remember, our goal is to find the circumcenter. What are the coordinates of the circumcenter? That's the question that we're trying to answer. And of course, we know that a circumcenter is the intersection of perpendicular bisectors. So we are going to draw at least two perpendicular bisectors and uh, that will show us where the circumcenter is. So the easiest perpendicular bisector to draw is going to be the one uh, that goes with this vertical line. So the midpoint of the vertical side here 
Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. This is six tall. So that means the midpoint is gonna be right here. So if I draw a perpendicular line here, that'll be a bisector. And if, uh, of course, if it's perpendicular, it'll be a perpendicular bisector. Um, of course, this is easy because a perpendicular line, if this is vertical, a perpendicular line will just be horizontal. So all I need to do is draw a horizontal line right here, and that will be my first perpendicular bisector. Okay, that's really long, but um, that is my first perpendicular bisector. Okay, um, I'll put a little box here to remind me that it's perpendicular, and it's the midpoint, so it's a bisector. Now, let's um, go ahead and draw another perpendicular bisector. You're just going to pick one of these other two sides. doesn't really matter which. Uh, again, I'm going to do both just for practice. Okay, say if I do this side up here. The midpoint is obviously right here. Up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2. This is in the middle. Now, speaking of up 1 over 2, um, perpendicular lines have slopes that are opposite and reciprocal. So let's talk slope. Okay, the original slope, like I just said, is up 1, right 2. So the original slope is 1 half, up 1, right 2. A perpendicular line will have slope what? Well, it's got to be opposite in sign. So if this one's positive, this one will be negative, and reciprocal. So instead of 1 half, it will be 2. OK? And I'm going to go ahead and write um, 2 over 1 to remind us that when I do the slope, I will go down to right 1. So as promised, um, so starting from my midpoint, I'm going to do this new slope, this perpendicular slope, down to right 1. So down to right 1 will put me right here. And I can already see where they intersect, but I will keep going. Down to right 1, down to right 1. I can go back to up 1. So you can already see, based on the fact that this dot is on the first perpendicular bisector, I can already see um, what the, the circumcenter is going to be. It's going to be the point 7, comma 5. Uh, but let's go ahead and draw it. So here is my perpendicular bisector. All right, that's my perpendicular bisector. So it was perpendicular to this side, and it was a midpoint, so it will be a bisector. So yes, the, um, the circumcenter is going to be the circumcenter is going to be the point seven, comma five. All right, but let's follow through and find our, our third and final perpendicular bisector. But if this was a test or something, um, you did two of them, you see where they meet, that's enough to be guaranteed that this is the, the um, circumcenter. So you don't have to do the third one. Um, this is just really for practice. So we found the midpoint of this side and drew a perpendicular bisector. We found the midpoint of this side and we drew a perpendicular bisector. So there's only one side left that we haven't done yet, and that's this side. Um, and you can probably see that the midpoint of this side is going to be right here. All right, down 2 over 2, down 2 over 2. This is right in the middle. Now, you heard me saying down 2 over 2. So let's see. So let's talk slope. So the slope of this side, you heard me say down 2 over 2. But what would this reduce down to? All right, hopefully you see that this would reduce down to down 1 over 1, or really just negative 1. So what would be the slope of a perpendicular line? Well, 
the, um, the reciprocal of 1 over 1 is still 1 over 1. But since the first one was negative, a perpendicular line will be positive. So it'll be positive 1 over 1. All right? That's up 1, right 1. And of course, positive 1 over 1. Really, the slope is 1. Okay, that's what's really happening. Okay, but as far as graphing it, we'll look at these. So, starting from the uh, midpoint, let's use the perpendicular slope and go up one, right one. So if I do that, I will go up one, right one. It's gonna be right there. Up one, right one, up one, right one, up one, right one. I could put more points in this direction like so. Okay, so these green dots are showing you where my third and final perpendicular bisector will be. But let's go ahead and draw it in. Okay, so there's my third and final perpendicular bisector. Okay, when I say that this is a perpendicular bisector, I'm talking about the fact that it's perpendicular right here. It's perpendicular to the side. And it's a bisector of the side. You can see it's the midpoint. And as we knew it would, this green perpendicular bisector hit the same intersection point of the other two, uh, the point 7, uh, comma 5. So the circumcenter is in fact 7, comma 5. All right, and that's it. So um, hopefully now you understand how to find the circumcenter coordinates, you know, if you have um, graph paper. All you really have to do is draw three perpendicular bisectors. Um, as far as making a bisector of each side, make sure you are using the midpoints of each side. As far as being perpendicular, use your slope. Find the slope of the, of the side, and then go opposite in sign and reciprocal, and that will tell you the slope of your perpendicular bisector. And wherever they meet, that will be your circumcenter.